Have you ever been completely and 100% sure that you were right about something but no one believed you? And have you been so desperate to prove to them that what you knew is the right thing that you would hurt them or others just to prove your point? The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay is a story of survival shown to us through a lens of mundane beauty that's punctuated with bursts of horrific violence to remind us that the danger is real, even if the ones inflicting it regret it along every step of the way. The story centers around Eric and Andy, a married couple, and their adopted Chinese daughter Wen. They've decided to take a family vacation and get away from everything, so they've rented a cabin uh, that's pretty isolated in the middle of the woods. What begins as an idyllic family vacation turns into a nightmare when Wen, who is collecting grasshoppers in the front yard, basically just playing, sees the largest man she's ever seen suddenly emerge from the woods. And you may have seen a trailer for a movie called Knock at the Cabin Door um, that's coming out soon. It's actually directed by M. Night Shyamalan. And in the trailer and in that movie, Leonard the Large Man is actually played by Dave Bautista. And so of course while reading this book, that's really all I could imagine in that role, which isn't a bad thing. It kind of helped paint a picture in my mind of what the character could look like. After Leonard and Wen chit chat for a little bit, Leonard tells her that her fathers aren't going to want to, but they're gonna have to let Leonard and his friends in. And that causes Wen to basically retreat into the house and try to find her fathers, cause she gets scared when she sees Leonard's three other friends emerge from the tree line holding what look like medieval primitive homemade weapons. Eventually, Leonard and his friends force their way into the cabin and they tie up Eric and Andrew and they explain that the four of them have been shown the apocalypse is going to happen, but they've also been shown how to stop the apocalypse from happening. Unfortunately for Eric, Andrew, and Wen, stopping it involves them choosing one of the three to willingly sacrifice to save every human on the planet. I won't go into much more detail in regards to the plot, everything I've talked about so far happens relatively early in the book, and the bulk of the narrative happens once this scenario has been established. There's a lot of really great character building in this book. I think there's a really interesting dynamic between Eric and Andrew, who are two gay men who have had very different experiences growing up, and then stacked on top of that their adopted daughter Wen, who they adopted from China, and I think this really explores some interesting ideas about identity. All of the characters in the story are so sure that they are correct and have the answer. Eric and Andrew are convinced Leonard and his friends are insane, while Leonard and them are 100% positive that they are about to save the world and they need to do anything in their power to make it happen. I think the idea of trying to convince someone you're right when the stakes are so high, I mean obviously the apocalypse is going to happen unless they willingly choose to sacrifice themselves or hurt a loved one, is a really interesting and compelling drive to a story. And what I really loved about this book is that the whole time reading it, I wasn't sure who was right. I mean, on the surface it seems like sacrificing one person to stop the apocalypse is silly, but it's written in such a way that I was second guessing over and over again about who was really right and who was doing the right thing. The book is written in a way that's really easy to read. I think I got through this in less than a week, maybe five days, and then once the tension starts it never lets up once things get rolling. And I think that's really accented with these acts of horrific violence that it almost seems like, I'll use a film expression here, it seems like the camera is just holding a wide shot and it doesn't let you look away as you're reading through what happens. It's almost got you going back and making sure you read that correctly because it's so fast and so violent and so brutal. But it's also juxtaposed by a lot of the action happens on a nice summer day and it's like broad daylight so there's this weird contrast of horrific nightmarish things occurring but they're also just backlit by beautiful summer sunlight. Overall I think The Cabin at the End of the World is a great book and a fairly quick read. I definitely recommend it if you are looking for something to give you a new nightmare scenario, break your heart, and leave you wondering who was actually right in the end.